she has asked that we celebrate her life with this. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV actors who requested to have their characters killed off. Echo, can you hear me? Before I go, I just want to tell you, you were fantastic. She was incredible. She died saving my life. For this list, we'll be looking at actors who allegedly approached their respective showrunners and asked for their characters to be killed for story, personal, or work-related reasons. Can you think of anyone else who made such a request? Be sure to let us know in the comments. Number 10, Aidan Turner, Being Human. What's going on? This British supernatural comedy drama aired on BBC Three from 2008 to 2013. You know, when things like vampires and werewolves were really big. The story concerns the two supernatural creatures living with a ghost in Bristol. Turner starred as the resident vampire John Mitchell. Turner was offered the role of Keeley in The Hobbit and decided to leave BBC Three. John Mitchell and Being Human behind. This is really happening. This is a good thing you're doing. Showrunner Toby Whithouse had planned for this in advance and wrote a sequence in series two where John and his friend Daisy murder a group of innocent people on a train. At the end of series three, a guilt-wracked John is killed by George to prevent him from hurting and killing more civilians. <laughs> Number nine, Cal Penn, House. I like being different. The view's better from the outside looking in. Harold really grew up. In Harold and Kumar, Cal Penn portrays the incredibly intelligent stoner who would rather sit around and smoke weed than attend medical school. In House, he plays a doctor named Lawrence Kuttner. In the fifth season episode, Simple Explanation, 13 discovers Kuttner's corpse inside his apartment. Oh God. The death earned some criticism for seemingly coming out of nowhere and serving no narrative purpose. And that's because the writers hadn't actually planned on killing off Kuttner. Kill them both. Come on, Kuttner! Penn had accepted public liaison work in the Obama administration and approached the producers regarding an early exit. They reluctantly agreed and Kuttner was no more. Number eight, Christopher Eccleston, Doctor Who. Are you alien? Yes. After more than 15 years off the air, Doctor Who returned in 2005 with Christopher Eccleston as the ninth Doctor. He would only last one season, quickly to be replaced by David Tennant. However, it wasn't because Eccleston did a bad job. In fact, he only agreed to do one season. Rose Tyler. <laughs> I was gonna take you to so many places. Barcelona? Not the city, Barcelona. This news was accidentally leaked to the press shortly after the debut episode, causing some speculation regarding Doctor Who's future. In 2010, he told the Radio Times in very vague terms that he was not happy working on the series. He reportedly didn't enjoy the on-set environment and culture and decided to part ways for personal reasons. Before I go, I just want to tell you, you were fantastic. Enter David Tennant and the 10th Doctor. Number seven. Eric Balfour, 24. I want you to know that it's, uh, it's okay. Balfour briefly played internet protocol manager Milo Pressman throughout the first and sixth seasons of Fox's incredibly popular 24. Who is in command? I am. In season six, Milo pretends to be acting director of CTU to protect Nadia from Chang Zi's forces a sacrifice that gets him shot in the head. The death was certainly shocking, and if it seems like it came out of nowhere, that's because it kind of did. Balfour requested to be killed off to work on a pilot for CBS. Unfortunately, the show was not picked up. A few years earlier, Vanessa Fairlito had also left the show to star in a movie with Tommy Lee Jones called Man of the House. A makeover! Number six, Denise Crosby. Star Trek The Next Generation. The martial arts competition is in three days. Are you prepared? I will be if you'll meet me on the holodeck later. Lieutenant Tasha Yar is an important female character within the realm of science fiction, as she is often considered a forerunner to the more powerful female characters of later Star Trek iterations and sci-fi programs. Unfortunately, her stint on the show did not last long. Actress Denise Crosby was not happy with her character, telling StarTrek.com, quote, I didn't want to spend the next six years going aye aye, Captain, and standing there in the same uniform in the same position on the bridge. She has asked that we celebrate her life with this. 
Jean Roddenberry understood and honored her request to leave, and Yar was controversially killed off in the first season episode, Skin of Evil. Never forget I died doing exactly what I chose to do. Number 5. Emma Caulfield, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Floppy, hoppy, bunnies. In 2003, the incredibly popular Buffy the Vampire Slayer was coming to an end, and fans wondered who would make it out alive. As it turns out, pretty much everyone. Everyone except Emma Caulfield's Anya Jenkins. Caulfield had reportedly felt that her work was underappreciated, with Joss Whedon telling TV Guide, quote, Emma had made it clear that she was really not interested in coming back. I think things with Fox weren't great and she felt ill-used. To ensure that she didn't return for any potential sequels or spin-offs, Whedon had Anya killed, making her the only regular character from Buffy to be permanently killed off. She was incredible. She died saving my life. Number 4. Jessalyn Gilsig, Vikings What are you two whispering about? Serving as one of the History Channel's most popular programs, Vikings follows the story of real-life Viking and raider Ragnar Lofbrok. Actress Jessalyn Gilsig plays Siggy, the wife of Earl Haraldson. By the end of season two, Gilsig approached showrunner Michael Hurst and requested to be killed off for unknown family reasons. She told The Hollywood Reporter, quote, I had some personal things in my life that I needed to be there for, some family things which everybody has sometimes. Hearst was completely understanding of the situation and crafted Siggy's emotional exit from the series in the early half of season three. Number three, Adewale Akinoye Agbaje, Lost. Echo. Can you hear me? As it turns out, some people were okay with leaving Lost in season three. Dominic Monaghan had voiced concerns regarding Charlie's lack of screen time and reportedly felt relief after leaving the show. But perhaps the person most happy to leave was Arewale Akinoye Agbaje, who played Mr. Echo throughout the second season. <laughs> Unfortunately, Akinoye Agbaje's foster parents passed away around the same time, and he requested that Echo be killed off so he could return to his home city of London and direct a movie about his life. Lindelof and Q's agreed, and Echo was killed by the smoke monster. His movie Farming was finally released in 2018. Number 2. Sophie Turner, Game of Thrones Where's John? He is our prisoner. Being killed on Game of Thrones was essentially a rite of passage, and Sophie Turner really didn't want to be left out of that experience. Unfortunately for her, the writers had other plans. During an interview with Wall Street Journal Cafe, Turner bluntly revealed her desire for Sansa to die and for Littlefinger to take the throne. I don't want to survive. You don't want to survive. And I want... I want Littlefinger to end up on the throne. She further added, quote, It would be really disappointing if Sansa got to the end and she was just okay. Cue the Price is Right horn sound. The North will remain an independent kingdom, as it was for thousands of years. As we all know, not only did Sansa make it to the end, but she was crowned Queen in the North. A satisfying ending, but not the one Turner had envisioned, or even wanted. Before we unveil our number one pick, let's take a look at some honorable mentions. Dan Stevens, Downton Abbey. Stevens wanted to focus more on movies. I hope I can count on you not to laugh when I drop the ball. Josh Charles, The Good Wife. Charles's contract was up and he wanted to explore new creative opportunities. <laughs> Paramedics! Josh Deal, Miami Vice. Deal desired the stage and was growing sick of Miami. John Francis Daly, Bones. Daly left to co-direct 2015's Vacation. Tell Daisy not to worry. She works too much. T.R. Knight, Grey's Anatomy. Knight hated his reduced screen time and his relationship with Shonda Rhimes broke down. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 
Number one, Dean Norris, Breaking Bad. I'm the boss man, say boss man. Am I the boss man? I'm the boss. It was basically a foregone conclusion that Hank would die at the end of Breaking Bad. So while his death in Ozymandias was certainly emotional, it wasn't very shocking. But how shocking would it have been if Hank had died in the first half of season five? Norris revealed to the National Post that he had wanted to do a pilot and personally asked showrunner Vince Gilligan to kill him off early. Bet your ass the cavalry's coming. No, no, no. Gilligan obviously refused as he had a clear vision regarding Hank's future and the conclusion of the series. Norris acquiesced and never got to do his pilot, but he did get under the dome soon after Breaking Bad's conclusion, so it all worked out in the end. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.